Video 07 October 3rd, 2010 Mithu, a friend asks, as your ships become invisible, where is the technology used for this? Invisibility is a simple trick. Invisibility is a relative state of the ability of the observer's vision. There are two technologies for this. In the case of humans, their vision is limited to a narrow range of frequencies of light. Our ships can generate a field of plasmid luminescence, which, like your infrared frequency is not detected by the human eye. The other technology is an energy field that creates the transference of light, a beam of photons that focuses on one side of the ship that is then transferred to the same spatial coordinates of its alignment on the opposite side of the ship, causing each beam of light to always be aligned with the one received. This technique transfers the image from one side to another dynamically, regardless of the position of the spacecraft with respect to an observer. With this technology, your common or infrared video cameras cannot record traces of a spaceship. We can also simultaneously create a field on the surface of the ship that absorbs and neutralizes your radar frequencies, preventing them from returning by reflection. We have a protective field of high plasmic energy that has the force of an energy weapon, that is, preventing any material from having surface contact with the spacecraft. This field is activated in navigating through space to avoid collision with micrometeoroids and other objects that may cross our routes. We never had to use it to defend ourselves from attack because it was never necessary. Large ships pass through here, and if you could see some of them without being properly prepared, you would be terrified. Some are ugly even by our standards and the small spheres that follow our airplanes. They have also been seen flying over various regions. These spheres are remote probes, controlled by any spacecraft that is in the region. They are very fast and have a wide variety of tools for analysis and recording. They can get in small places and maneuver accurately. They never knock into anything due to having a navigation system that accurately controls their proximity to objects. They pose no danger to you, unless there is an accident caused by some event beyond the control of the operators or interference of attempted capture by humans. There are also many of these probes in research under the ocean every day. They are programmed to self-degenerate if they lose contact with the command for a predetermined period of time and are considered lost. If one is caught, it becomes a lot of metallic powder in a short time. Why not use this technology for self-degradation in spacecraft as well? This will avoid falling into the hands of Earthlings. Spacecraft are far more complex units. They have systems that make it impossible to self-destruct, because of anti-carbon units and are manned by humanoids. They are not planned to fail, when they have problems, they are retrieved, and when they fall into the hands of Earthlings, they are impossible to be analyzed. So, no problem. The probes are aplenty, more fragile, and unmanned. Because they are not managed by brain signals like spaceships. They contain a navigation system controlled from a distance that could be parsed and partially understood by Earthlings. They can self-destruct without any major problems or major costs. What kind of weapons do you have? We do have weapons, but do not use atomic energy. The atomic energy is a force that causes many bad side effects. A primitive way of getting dirty energy. It is harmful to all living things, plants, and animals, including humanoids for sure. Very soon you will be compelled to replace the dirty energy with clean energy. Our arms are summarized in bundles of concentrated energy that are not used as weapons in and of themselves. 
We use them most often to destroy asteroids and other celestial bodies that might be causing any problems. Of course, if there is a need to use one as a weapon against some strange race or circumstance, it will be used as a last resort. You are being monitored very many years with respect to your atomic weapons. We have ways to counter catastrophic effects, but there would be a loss of many species living on the planet. Causing an imbalance for many generations. All of your atomic installations are under constant surveillance. In the case of nuclear plants, they are currently used for energy production. What would be the clean solution, eliminating coarse hydroelectric power plants by all means? Clean energy is currently the anti-carbon unit. It has no side effects. We use small power generating units that can fulfill any of your major cities for centuries without any maintenance. Clean energy, cheap and abundant. We do not use wires to conduct energy like you here on Earth. Factories, homes, or vehicles have a small receiver that is tuned in the power distribution center. Everything is wireless. Power is distributed to any remote place on the planet where a receiver is installed. Your power plants fueled by oil also have their days numbered. They are big suppliers of CO superscript 2 accumulated in your atmosphere. The burning of petroleum in general, is a dirty form of energy that you still use on your planet. In this new era, the Earth's atmosphere will decontaminate radically. Have you heard the songs that I gave you? Yes, thank you, we heard and many of them are very beautiful, conveying pleasant feelings. We appreciate all played with pianos. I brought your unit back because now we have copied the sounds on our equipment. Well, on another occasion, you told us that your teletransporter took only your signature, not even any dust. You took the iPod to your ship, how? When I want to take something with me, I simply say that I am taking an artifact, can be a plant, animal, or object. The system tracks what is in contact with me and immediately creates a signature for that item. It is so automatic that it is almost imperceptible when you're used to using the teletransporter. When I say nothing, only my signature is carried. Do you know if others like you are communicating with other fellow Earthlings like me around the planet? I know many have already talked to Earthlings. I was curious about your curiosities. I feel good for us that we can communicate at a good level. It's much easier to communicate with you, our brains interact very well. At this end of the current era, it is already possible for good communication. You have arrived at an intellectual level that most easily absorbs these new concepts. The Earth is getting ready. For me personally, this was a great experience too. Unfortunately, not all extraterrestrial races have the same principles. The reptilians certainly still need to develop a philosophy of coexistence. Some non-reptilian races of independent colonies also follow them to profit at their associations and exploitation of raw materials. These groups are not very reliable. I asked about the movement of reptilians in their lunar base, and according to sources in our fleet. This past year about 4,000 reptilians came to Earth and did not return to their colonies. They surely must be living and working in underground bases courtesy of your governments. In total there are around 20,000 reptilians, and related, living in unofficial settlements on your planet. You see, your planet can accept the races that like living here, but this race does nothing that is not only self-interest. They do not intend to help develop your community, only to exchange favors. 
Be smart with what your governments are planning to do. These partners may not be something for the welfare of the community.